So my name is Jamie Crew, and I'm an artist living in Glasgow. And the exhibition that I'm presenting here at Gasworks is called Female Executioner. And it's a show that works a lot with um, a source, which is a Victorian French novel called Monsieur Venus uh, by Rachild, written in 1884. And it's a novel that is a, um, a kind of exploration of gender inversion, kind of sadistic power, class power, and a, a certain kind of decadent like gender horror. So the novel Monsieur Venus, um, written by Rachild, is a story about Raoul de Venerand, who is a masculine aristocratic woman, and Jacques Silver, who is a kind of feminine working class boy that she meets and turns into her mistress. Uh, and together they kind of go down this path of, of uh, gender inversion. Um, he becomes more feminine, she becomes more masculine. Um, and eventually they get married, and eventually Jacques is killed in a duel, and um, these kind of transgressions of gender are all punished by a certain kind of like Victorian morality. So one of the works in the show is uh, a new video work called Adulterous, um, which is a kind of adaptation of uh, an excerpt of chapter 16 of the novel, but it's kind of a uh, misadaptation because instead of um, instead of adapting what is described in, in this section of text, it adapts the kind of uh, excess of it, the stuff that's off, off screen of the text, um, but simultaneously has the text running underneath. Uh, so what you have is this episode of uh, kind of sexual jealousy and suspicion, and uh, which climaxes with uh, a gun being slapped out of someone's hand and a duel to the death. Um, you have that running in the text along the bottom of the screen, while what you see on screen is the person who uh, the jealousy was attached to, who has gone off, who has left their domineering uh, partner and is uh, being feminized by their sister and uh, then going on, on a kind of excited uh, erotic journey or beginning one. Um, so what I wanted this video to do was have this tension between text and uh, image and the two different types of uh, passing of time that you can do with reading text and watching an image um, and to uh, yeah depict this moment of kind of gender transgression which is punished really decisively in the novel um, but when kind of taken out of that context as an image and as a, as a kind of filmic narrative uh, actually turns into something really warm and positive and um, optimistic. So one of the first things from the gallery that uh, a viewer might see uh, in this kind of empty doorway there is a navy pole hanging down with um, a wax tablet attached to it um, which has a counter relief of a bouquet of flowers and beyond that against the far wall you can see stacks of uh, 27 other um, almost identical wax tablets. Uh, this is a work called Inert Being, um, which references a, a certain kind of moment in the novel to do with uh, the availability of mistresses based on bouquets of flowers. Uh, and the intimation of which is that if you have white flowers every day, uh, it, it says something about constant availability and uh, the kind of uh, domination that can attend to that. So one of the things I've done in the space is I've uh, taken the doors off the front, the front of the gallery and kind of shifted them through to a different aperture in the gallery. Um, and this is a kind of, uh, not necessarily a work in itself, but it's a, a gesture which tries to tie into these uh, dynamics of things being forced open, things being improperly sealed, and what this kind of uh, gives to a set of works that are about uh, a certain kind of exploitative vulnerability. Uh, on one of these doors uh, I've pasted an excerpt of chapter 17 of the novel and on the opposite door facing the other way I've uh, pasted a, a kind of knife drawn text that I've made called Stonebreaker which is a description of um, 
a certain like experience of gender that I had while uh, on residency at Gasworks in 2016 and how I kind of had this experience of being in a new context, announcing things about myself and my gender in particular, and finding that actually enunciation and expression uh, made me feel less secure and less uh, positive about those things uh, than ever before in some ways. And so it's about, yeah, the risks uh, the risks of talking about something, the risks of uh, touching something uh, that you've left passive. Uh, whenever I uh, have, have the luxury of, uh, of doing an exhibition, I always try and keep an eye on the different ways that uh, viewers can be drawn in and pushed away from, from things, and also the, the kind of different uh, challenges of, of inviting someone into your work and your world and your life and of uh, kind of excluding them and so part of that is thinking a lot about community I was thinking a lot about um, collaborators and kind of uh, certain ethics or kind of ethical conundrums of working with other people um, and trying to keep a kind of oscillation between like positive and negative uh, welcoming and like uh, repulsive so leading on from, uh, from those doors, they lead into the second space of the gallery, which is here, um, which I have had painted with a wash uh, made from woad, which is uh, a blue dye derived from plants, the woad plant. Um, the reason I've done this is because um, Rashield in the novel talks about a certain, uh, a certain space that's painted the blue of a cloudless sky, a walled up room, painted the blue of a cloudless sky. <clears throat> so I wanted to uh, do something which um, responds to this. It, does, it paints a room blue, but it paints it the least sky-like blue that it can, it finds the earthiest blue. Um, and in some ways this is an expression of a lot about the show, that it's pushing against the logic or the kind of the, the rules of the book, the domination of the book but still it's under its logic, it doesn't totally escape. So also in this room there is a sculpture called Wax Figure, um, which is actually uh, a sheet of latex thrown over a bunch of uh, gallery detritus. Um, this is again like a reference to a kind of uh, figure, object, person kind of in the book. Um, but where in the book it's this kind of beautiful waxwork uh, simulacra of a person, including their hair and teeth and nails. Uh, here it's like the loosest uh, version of, of, of the body that it could be. And I, I think a lot of it, of the time, about it being a kind of a body that's been voided of all its meat. So uh, throughout the works, which I think are all really interconnected, there's um, a kind of interweaving of of reference to this novel and very specific, very kind of personal uh, reflections and trying to kind of muddy those up and uh, weave them together is really important to me to creating a kind of practice that is really complicit in its own references and observations.